well-met adventurers. My name is Lee. Welcome to Mage Productions. Today, I'm going to be doing a painting tutorial with this handy dandy adventurers paint set kit. So cool. So this is the Nozul's Marvelous Pigments Adventure Paint Set. Comes with all these little paints, a fancy little brush, and a uh, Minsk and Boo miniature. So I'll be using everything that comes in the set. I won't be using anything extra or anything like that other than my palette and something to hold the miniature with. So I haven't even opened this yet. So we're gonna open it together. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yay! Also, I might cut this into little bits so it's easier chunks and steps. Again, I haven't opened it, so I don't know if there's instructions that come with it or what. But I'm excited, it'll be fun. So I'm going to change a few things around and we'll get started with this guy. All right. So we have our paint kit, and this is backwards for me, so we'll do our best. All right, now we gotta open this guy. So I'm curious to see, kind of compared to the starter kit from Reaper, if this one comes with instructions or not, and what's all in the box and how it's all set up, but. It'll be sweet. All right. Oh, comes in a nifty little plastic case. A lot of paper. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. All right. Official painting series. Cool. Welcome to the Dungeons and Dragons painting universe. So it gives like a diagram of the colors that are used. Um, you guys see that? Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Kind of shows off all the colors, some miniatures. I'm guessing these are from other kits. That's cool. Army painter, get more for gaming. Show some. Army Painter tools. I've never used the Army Painter um, paints before, but I use I use their brushes a lot. I absolutely love their brushes. So that's neat. No instructions. Let's see. Let's look at this paper again. Minsk and Boo has a man of great strength but limited mental prowess. I think they're trying to say something about it. Um, let's see. It indeed does not give any instructions of how to paint this guy. The only thing it gives is a rundown of what colors go where. Priming, base coating. Combining these paints offer a 40 set of 48 specifically selected colors. Do, 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 do. Oh, look at this. For full in depth tutorials and more, visit www.thearmypainter.com forward slash DD. It's written there at the bottom. Should we do that? Should we check that out? Or should we just do it ourselves? I feel like we should probably check that out. All right. I will get something so I can pull that up. And then we will get started. All right. Now, I've gone to the armypaper.com forward slash DD. I will leave this um, link below. And on the left hand side, there's a um, shoot, what do they call it? Painting guides. Clicked on painted guides, found Minsk and Boo, and I pulled that up. It gives a pretty interesting introduction, goes over the products within it. 
brushes, blah, 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 blah. All right, step one is what they call it, level one, step zero, priming. But first, let's take a look at what they offer us. So I've got a brush here, starter, that's what it says. It has a cool Dungeons & Dragons logo on it. There we go, good job camera, focusing. Love that. It looks like size zero, maybe? Brush. So there's different sizes. The smaller the number, the smaller the brush nib is. That's cool. We have an array of colors here. Flump pink. Focus. Flump pink. Kraken blue. Love that. That's cool. What is that? Angelic yellow. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, Dragon Fire Red. I love these names, guys. These names are perfect. Gray Primer. This looks like it is for level one, step zero priming. What is that? Ooh, Mithril Silver. Looks like we had a spill in there or something. Now we go to Bugbear Brown. What's this? Trant Green. Sweet. Super cool. Abyssal Black. Very nice, guys. And Lawful White. All right. That works. Oh, yeah. And our mini. Look at this guy. Look how cool he is. So cool. Let's see if I can get a closer look. There we go. Yeah. Look at Boo. Right over there on his shoulder. So cool. All right, get rid of this little plastic thing. Uh, I wish it came with, like, an, I don't know, some sort of case, something, something. All right. I will be, some things that I've provided myself for this. This is the hobby holder uh, from Game Envy. Uh, there's another video that I did on a review on it. They just had a Kickstarter, should be going up soon. They have pre-orders on their website game envycom I think I'll put a link in the description and you can go there um, I will also be using my red grass games wet palette um, do you need to use a wet palette when you paint no should you no can you sure but really it doesn't matter I used a plate for years all right so let's take our guy, let's put him on our little sticky tack here. Be sure to stay in the frame, Lee. Come on, dude. All right. So we got dude attached. Now, let's take off this little cap here. Adjust the camera a bit. Okay, I've turned off autofocus so that I can better show you guys the paint. Now, I like that this kit comes with primer because I didn't use primer for the longest time. Until recently, I've started using it and it's been pretty cool. Um, all right. So the instructions say that all miniatures need to need a primer for the acrylic war paints to stick to the models, explanation point. Is that true? Maybe better? Sure. All right, so. I've added our primer over here on my palette. And does it go into any details? Not really. I mean, it, it talks a lot about kind of D&D adventures you'll find. Gray primer is a natural blah, blah, blah. All right. So I'm taking some of the gray primer. And I'm just going to cover dude. Cover him completely. Thin layer. I have not watered down any of these paints. I'm just using them as is. Um, we can go into more advanced techniques with different videos, but this really is just to show right off the bat Painting in general using everything that you have from this kit Going in trying to get all these creases and the tops of them and so on and so forth. I hope the lighting is okay. Gotta get all these little spots. He's got a lot of crevices with this super awesome cape he has. 
get Boo's butt. All right, going back around the front. I like to, this is just personal preference, and a lot of these comments that I will make will be my own, my own little techniques and things that I have found that help me along the way. If they help you, cool. If you have your own techniques, that's awesome too. That doesn't make anybody wrong or right. As long as you're having fun, it's all good. But when I prime things, I like to start in the middle. I don't know why kind of work my way down to the extremities as you can see I kind of covered the legs first now I'm going up through to the arms covering this sword does it matter which way you do it no but I'm doing that anyway it's cool it's good. I'm curious as to how this primer covers. Um, comparing it to other brush on primers that I've used, I've used uh, Reaper Miniatures brush on primer, which is my current favorite. I like the gray primers a lot because it allows you to see more of the details that are in the miniatures, especially when working with something like Reaper their bones line they're white so it can be kind of difficult to see the uh, some of the details in the minis and then when you use a white primer I mean that doesn't really help so using a gray kind of helps bring out those crevices and shadows and such so this is a somewhat laborious task using this tiny little brush to cover these big areas. I do, I'm a strong believer that using the right brush for the right job makes all the difference in the world when painting. Um, but this is the brush that came with the model, so this is the brush we were using. Because my intent with these videos video I guess for now maybe videos we'll split it up we'll see how it goes um, is to um, just use what's in the kit so that you have everything that I'm using sans the palette and this hobby holder so that we're all on equal ground nobody has to do anything extra do you have to have a hobby holder to paint? No. It helps. It makes a big difference. Um, I think in one of the other videos I did kind of an introduction to getting started. I don't know what I called it. It doesn't matter. Um, but I kind of went over some of the holders that I've used with the Citadel handle, which is about $10, or this guy, which is... 13 14 dollars I think I'm not sure um, or just using like sorry I was getting his face concentration concentration um gosh what was I saying oh, I was talking about uh, holders yeah using a um, like a pill bottle or something works great oh I got out of frame. I'm sorry, guys. All right, so I'm just being sure that I cover everything that I can, trying to keep the layers thin so that I don't glop up any details with the paint. And yeah, washing my brush, having so much fun. Okay, so we'll let that dry for a second. We don't want to go over any of these spots while it's still wet. So I'll let that dry. Do, 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 do. There he is. Little spin. Sweet. All right, we'll let that dry and then we'll come back and we'll get started with step one base coat. All right, 
now that this guy is dry, it looks like all parts are dry, it turns a cool matte color, so that's nice. You can kind of look for shiny parts to see if it dried or not. All right, I'm going to move my little wavy guy back here, and now we're going to go to, what is this? Step one, level one, step one, part A. So it wants us to use Flumph Pink. Use Flumph Pink as the skin tones. So these instructions, I feel like, are super cool. They go into really good detail. They have awesome pictures. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit to the palette here. Probably more than we need, but that's okay. Um, and it says, two thin coats are better than one thick coat to keep the fine details of the miniature intact. And I feel like that is extremely true in all cases. More thin coats will be better because you won't lose those details in the miniatures. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet my brush just a bit and I'm going to pull some paint, just very lightly dabbing in the paint. And now I'm gonna roll it on the palette to get some excess paint off so that I'm not completely drenched in paint. And it wants us to start with the head and then the arms and the hands. So let's get his head. And I just ran into the mic. Go me. Loud noises. All right. So painting this guy, trying to keep thin layers on it. Because I have watered down the paints, I will probably have to do three layers. And that's cool with me. I'm cool with that. And because we're starting at the layer of the skin, I like to start like I would getting dressed, going from skin to something like socks and kind of working my way up to the top layers. That way I don't have to worry about, see I've gotten some paint on the cloak. I don't have to worry about that because we're just gonna paint over it. And that's cool. And always moving the miniature to make sure that I get in all those little crevices and parts and pieces. And I've found that pulling in the direction of things really helps. In this case, starting at the wrist and then pulling to the fingers, kind of getting that through. It just helps in directional things. I don't know if it's needed or not, but it works for me. So whatever, I'm gonna try to get back here, the back of his hand on this sword. He's got some deep details, which is cool, but some difficult spots to get to. All right. Keep running into the microphone, so I took my hat off. I'm hatless, guys. It's weird. Okay. Now, ooh, that is way too much paint. Again, the instructions go into this too, but don't glob your miniatures with paint. It's not going to be a good time for anybody. Thin coats are best. They will get you the best end results, and you will be happiest with those. Thin coats, thin coats. Well, it looks like this paint dries pretty quickly, so that's good. Fill up the tip of my brush again, go back over from the top, back up to his face. Getting in those eye sockets, the nose, lips, mouth area yeah. and waiting for each layer to dry will really help you out a lot it might slow your progress a bit but again in the long run it'll, you'll be better for it promise 
anybody who has kind of been to my painting streams knows how I feel about dry time. I'm very impatient, but if you're just starting out, learning that patience early will really help you. Don't be like me. Wait for the paint to dry. It's really not that hard. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to run through these base coats, and then we'll stop the video there. I will make a second video covering the other details. That way it's not super long. All right. Always wash your brush. We'll let this guy dry a bit. Pulling in the crease of your hand helps. Kind of right there in that line. Grabbing, twisting, pulling. Which is really interesting because these instructions from the Army Painter actually talk about that. Um, after each paint, make sure you rinse your brushes very carefully in a clean glass of water and dry the bristles on a piece of tissue paper before starting on your next color. So I have these little drop mat cloths and they work a lot or pull it in your hand. Remember to stay in the frame. Self, good job. Alright, let's see. Skin tones. Yeah, we'll need another layer of this. Alright. Paint just on the tip. That's all you need. Thin layers, man. Thin layers. Let's get all those spots. I need better lighting, guys. If I'm going to be doing this more often. I need better lighting, and I need to stop hitting my microphone with my paintbrush. Maybe if I put it on the other side, that would help. I don't know. We'll figure it out as we go. It's a learning process for all of us, right? Cool. Sliding the paint across the dude. He's got some big biceps, man. Get all those crevices, move your miniature around. Looking at it in different lighting will help too, because then you can see pieces or parts that you may have missed. All right, so skin tone. It's looking pretty good. All right, let's see here. That is step one, base coat one part A. Part B. They want us to use this mithril silver. That's gray primer. Where's the mithril silver? Here it is. Oh, black lid for the uh, metallic paints. That's cool. All right, shake, 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 shake your paint. So for the mithril silver, we'll be doing the sword, the scale armor, the arm, his arm pieces, his leg plates. Um, he also has a belt buckle and earring, which those will be interesting. I'm not sure if I entirely agree with doing this right now, but it's fine. Yeah, and the instructions talk about um, they use this starter brush for all of these steps, but a thinner brush would probably help. I agree, but that's okay. We'll use what we have. This is what we have. So this is the mithril silver. And we're going to go in and paint all this scale mail. Small strokes. Nice and thin going down. Sometimes it's better to get the difficult 
angles first when painting as opposed to starting with the easy spots. Just so it's done, it's out of the way. Making sure I pull off any excess paint that is on here. Ooh, that's a tight fit. All right, so right here on his chest piece and his arms, very tight fit, go nice and slow. Nice and slow. And if your skin hasn't dried entirely from the flump pink, you might get some uh, some of that skin paint pulled in there also. So just be careful of that. Make sure each layer dries before going on to the next. Slow and steady wins the race. Okay. I am trying my best to get those spots in there. Some minis, as you go up in some of the companies offer their miniatures in pieces, so they do not come assembled like this guy did. So you would just get like the torso and the arms and the sword separately, which is helpful sometimes when reaching those difficult areas I'm trying to see some reference images if yeah so the entire arm bit is this silver color so just going slow covering that area thin layers never be afraid to go back and fix things and then if you happen to go over with the mithril silver, you can take that flump pink again, kind of fix those areas pretty easily. Get his arm bits on his other arm. Pull, 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 pull. These are almost done. And then we'll get his sword, and then his legs, his belt buckle, and his earring. And looking at the mini, turning it while painting really helps kind of determine the best place that you can attack from, if you will so that you can make sure you get the best angle when you go in so you're not like pushing paint all over everything. Get the sword hilt. I'm just guessing the end is also silvered. Get the inside. Ooh. See, this is interesting angles to get. Interesting angles. Cool mini, though. Really like. And we get to paint Minsk and Boo. How cool is that? Alright, boots. Well, not really boots, just his leg plates. Thanks. Pull, 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 pull. Do, 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 do. And then I'm sure at some point we'll get those pants and stuff too, so don't worry about any overlap. So shiny. This is a cool metallic. I have a hard time with metallics. These are nice. Okay, rinse my brush. Let that sit for a minute. We'll go to step one C. So now we've done the fluff pink, mithril silver. Now we're gonna go dragonfire red for this cloak. 
So I'm going to start from this front part as it's going to be the hardest to get to. Go down through his arms on the inside, the inside of his legs right here, and then I'll do the back because the back will be easy. And this may require multiple coats. So we don't want to glob it on, just like we said. Thin coats, thin coats will be best. All right. Tip of the brush. I'm going in very slowly. Try to get that collar just ever so lightly. Pull, pull, pull. Yeah, this will definitely require multiple coats, just little bits. And the paintbrush, and I'm probably just going to paint Boo red. These edges. Going nice and slow with the side of the brush will help not get paint all over his arm. Yep, oh, yep, totally painted boo red already. All right, get around him right there. Start pulling down. So I think, just kind of as a as a side thought about this kit, I like the colors. I like the array that you get. You get a good kind of set. The brush is nice. But I'm sad it didn't come with anything to store your paints in or it didn't come with the actual instructions and it wasn't very front and center where to find the instructions slight disappointment missed opportunities guys missed opportunities all right all oh. yeah i got some red on his armor it's all right we can fix it Beauty of paint, guys. Beauty of paint. Pulling along the length, just like cloth would fall. It seems to help. So your brush strokes don't get strange. And thinner coats will lead to less brush stroke marks and will lead to a cleaner looking miniature when you're done. Which is cool. All right, got that. Now let's check the front, see if we missed anything. I don't think we missed anything. I think it looks pretty good. All right, let's hit the back. From the top, pulling down long ways, nice and slow. Slow, thin coats. Under boo, around the neck, around the neck. Get all these little swooshes in here. I like the details of these miniatures. This is a Gale Force 9 miniature, which are super cool quality. Um, I just painted Ark and the Cruel from Gale Force 9, and he was super neat. I also have a Strahd on top of his Nightmare that I need to paint. 
That'll be fun. But that doesn't really matter for these. We'll definitely need multiple coats, at least on the back. I'm getting some brush stroke marks in there and it's not quite flat the color wise all right now under getting the bottom layer of the cloak little details like this remembering to get all the bottom parts and stuff like that really make a difference in the end quality guys I keep poking this microphone with with my paintbrush and I'm really hoping that you know once I actually go to edit this video and put it up that it's not like boom every time I bump into it I will find a better setup I promise all right let's go back up through the front it hasn't quite dried yet so just light thin layers light thin layers Pulling down. Be sure to move your miniature so you can get all those little details in this cloak. Get the edges around his neck. Go nice and slow. It's not a race. Nobody's timing you. Feel free to pause and start the video as you wish, fast forward or whatever. Whatever you need that makes it easier for you. Oop, forgot a part right there. Missed a spot. Okay. Cloak's looking good. Hit another little layer on it. And then we'll move on to the next step, which I think are the pants. This seam right here is not so easy to get into. All right. I think that's good, guys. Uh, let's see. Did I? All right. I got a little bit of overlap down here at the boot. I'm just going to touch up with my mithril silver. Hit this edge with my mithril silver. Oh, am I good? I think I'm good. Not too bad. Sweet. <laughs> Inspect. Okay. Elbow with my flump pink. I love that it's called fluff pink. It's just so cool. Alright. That's good. That's good. We've got red. Got some skin tones, we got some silver. Cool. What's next? Pants. The trousers were painted in abyssal black, again, taking extra care not to get black onto the cloak or leg plates. Cool. Abyssal black. Can't see that with the miniature in front of it. Abyssal black. Let's shake it up. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. 
Cool. Pistol black. Just a touch. Because there's like no pants really. Right, pull that. Okay. Try to be super careful to get in between here. Getting these edges, I've found that going to the corner from where the two colors meet and pulling out helps so that you don't get excess paint on something that you don't want to get excess paint on. Boop, 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 boop. Sound effects, man. Sound effects. All right. Let's see. Move this guy. There we go. Let's get that edge right here. I think that's one leg of his trousers done. Trousers, as they call it, all official like and stuff. All right. Let's get this edge of his other trouser. Thin coats, thin coats. This black is super thick too, so be careful with that. So far, I've only thinned the skin color, which I have the hardest time with skin tones and making them look decent and not like super gritty, I think is the word that I want to use for that. So, this is looking good. All right, that was pretty easy. Cool, wash my brush. And we have a layer of black trousers. Hopefully my brush washing isn't too loud. Okay, what's up next, guys? We're on D, now we're going to E with Bugbear Brown. With my Bugbear Brown, I should be, we are finishing off painting all the leather parts with a coat of Bugbear Brown. The boots are straightforward, but the belt, try to be as careful as you can while loading only a little bit of paint onto the brush at a time. When you have a little bit of paint on your brush, the brush dries very quickly, so you might want to add a tiny bit of water to your paint in order to leave a smooth flow off your brush. Interesting concept. All right, Bugbear Brown. Shake, shake, shake. Get a little bit on the palette. Now it wants us to do the boots right here and the belt and it looks like that's it so just a little bit on the tip of the brush going in for the boots I'm trying to be super careful so I don't mess up those leg plates that we just painted right up to the edge around the back ooh interesting all right so the back of the boots is open quit right into the microphone Lee thanks all right so the back of the boots are open so Trying to get in there. And not get it all over his cloak. Let's go around from the inside. Get that boot. Alright, that's looking good. Oops, I got some 
brown on his cloak. Let's get some red. Fix that. Fix the brown, or fix the red, the brown, whatever. Whatever, I fixed it. All right, getting in on this belt. So at least the brush it came with is pretty small. You should just only have to do like the smallest little touch to really get this belt. And remember, the belt buckle is supposed to be silver, so I'm going to leave the center part open. Try to go like down under this arm to get the opposite side of the belt going nice and slow. And with the belt buckle, I don't know if I can quite get so the belt buckle is right here. Dude. And I'm just gonna take my brown and I'm gonna touch it like in the center to where the belt would kind of show through the belt buckle, giving the illusion that we painted around it. Hey, neat. All right. That's looking good. That's all it wants us to paint is the boots and the belt. And now we shift our attention to Boo. We start off by paint, painting the little critter with lawful white. Lawful white. We're going in with our giant miniature space hamster. Just a dab. A little off of white. Get it on the brush. We're gonna paint this little guy. Hi, Boo. It's funny because my cat's name is Boo and he's laying behind me. Every time I say Boo, he beeps. This is knowledge that you needed to know. All right, get booted, but so it looks like for me, at least, some of the red around Boo wasn't quite dried yet. So Boo's a little pink. So I'm gonna let little pink Boo dry off. should be dry add in that white boop 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 sound effects sound effects random singing There's Boo. Boo has been painted with lawful white. Now it wants us to shift our attention to Boo's fur with step 1G. And it wants us to use a mix of angelic yellow and the bugbear brown. So I already have some bugbear brown right here in my palette. As you can see my little finger up here at the top of the screen. I'm gonna take my angelic yellow Shake it up real good. And it wants us to mix three parts yellow with one part brown to create this color. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the brown over here in my palette. Here, I'll move this so you guys can see it a little bit better. Rah! All right, a little bit of this brown, and pull it over here. Take some of this yellow, and pull, kind of chop, 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 chop. Mix it up, mix it up. I don't really know what color I'm supposed to be making. 
I'm guessing hamster color. All right. That looks hamster colored, right? Sure. And now we're just going to paint the top of Boo. We're going to paint it back. Oh, that white is not dry. That's all right. Top of his back, down his face. Looks hamster esque, right? Sure. Just kind of dabbing it on there get that detail so I'm thinking I just want you to leave like thin layer of white kind of like for hamster belly for hamster belly all right we have done hamster now it wants us to do 1h now it's time to paint Minsk's purple tattoo now we have to mix some paints together we'll do the Kraken blue one part Kraken Blue, one part Dragonfire Red, and one part Lawful White. Sweet. So I'll take this and I'll do this in a new section. For one part, I'm just going to take one little droplet because face tattoo, you know, it's not big. We don't need to use the paint. Kraken Blue. Oh, where are you? There you are, screen. Ooh, that is a lot lighter than I thought it was going to be. Kraken blue, and then it wants lawful white. Sweet. Oh, it said two parts. Two parts Kraken blue. That's alright. We'll see what color this does. Now, for this, I'm going to use... I'm pointing at it like you can see. Let's move you. All right, I'm going to use this part of the brush to mix this up. I'm just gonna twirly, twirly, twirly. Kinda get all that paint mixed together. Now I see why I wanted two parts blue to really get that blue showing. Get some more blue in there. Cool. It's a nice light purple. All right. So Minsk's tat two. I honestly have no idea. I honestly have no idea what this is supposed to look like. So I'm going to pull up our little picture. I mean, there's really no reference. Stopping at this stage is perfectly okay if you are new to the painting hobby, blah, blah, blah. Please have powered yourself so far. Okay, no, 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 no. We're not stopping here, guys. We're going all the way through. All right. Let's Google it. All right, guys. So I have consulted Google, and it pretty much shows that he has a circle kind of on the top of his right above his eye on this side that is skin and then it's like an oval shape so let's do our best hmm all right i'm not a fan of how this purple turned out so i'm doing it again I want it darker this time. I'm wasting so much paint here, dudes. So much paint. I'm 
not adding the white yet. It's just so red. That's that's a decent purple. That's a decent purple. All right, so we'll use that. Lightly painting the side of his head purple. Leaving a little circle in the middle. And you can always go back with the flump pink if you wanted to kind of brighten up that spot or fix any overages that you may have done. I think we're going to do that. I think we're going to take a little bit of the flump pink, kind of dab it in that spot. That might have been too much. That's all right. That looks good. It looks decent. Okay. Cool. Now that we've painted the side of his head, we're going to what does it say to do next we can stop at this stage it's perfectly okay but let's take some black following the steps for here for 1h is Painting around the edge of the miniature black. This just gives it like a uh, finished look, I guess. And I'm using the black that's already on the uh, already on the palette. From doing his pants. Just going all the way around. Up some of these spots with the gray primer that I hit. All right, so I just had a crazy mishap with my computer. Anyways, we've painted this base, and now um, I want to kind of go in with a little more other little details that apparently it shows in the picture, but not that I painted. So this part right here on the sword is supposed to be leather-ish, so we're using the Bugbear Brown. Getting that on there. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. Cool. Kind of get the handle of the sword also with this Bugbear Brown. Apparently I just missed this whole bit in the instructions and that's fine. We can go back and fix it. get the backside under bits around moving cool um, for his armor kind of get this edge right here this bottom edge am I still in the frame nope nope not in the frame jeez get this bottom edge his armor try not to get it on the metal bits or his pants Just very lightly 
hitting that edge. All right, using the photo reference, we've got another little brown part right across here. Bottom of his war skirt. Top of his war skirt, whatever, dude. And then he kind of has like a belt going across the top right here. Does it go all the way? Yeah, it goes all the way. It's kind of hard to see. That's all right. We'll paint it anyway. Clasp. That's the word I was looking for. All right. Get some of that uh, mithril silver. Get the edge over here. He's got like a little belt buckle guy right there. Get that. Just put a dab on it. Nice. There we go. Here is our level one Minsk. This red is so shiny. Weird. Cool, but weird. Fix his tattoo just a touch. Don't be afraid to go back and touch up things. Ooh, this whole thing came off. That's cool. Tie that back down. All right, screw that back down, whatever. All right, there it is. There's our level one Minsk. Now I will switch frames real quick. Alright, so Minsk, we've done our level one. They have additional levels. They say you can stop here and he is playable now. Pretty sweet. You can be happy with this, or we can move on to the other levels. Um, I have looked into those and they require different paints. Um, well, I guess require is not the right word, but. The instructions give different paints, so I will move forward with the additional levels, still using the paints that came with this set, um, and we'll just make it work. Cool, so stay tuned for that video. Level 1, mints done. Congratulations, you did it. I'm proud of you. Keep painting. Thanks, guys. If you like this video, subscribe, like, give us a thumbs up, visit majorproductions.com. We have contact there. You can send other questions, comments, concerns. Um, you can leave comments below. Yeah, I don't know. It'll be great. We'll keep going, guys. It's fun. Bye.